It's been an interesting few weeks as far as UK space news is concerned, with developments from AAC Clyde Space, Alba Orbital preparing their next batch of satellites for flight, High Impulse continuing to grow ahead of their maiden UK launch at Saxevoord, a dramatic development from ABL Space Systems, and, speaking of Saxevoord, how about a wet dress rehearsal from RFA on top of their already exciting progress? Plenty to dive into for sure, so let's get going. Welcome to UK Space News, I'm Tom June, and before we go on, if you want to stay up to date with all the latest space news from the UK, as well as ESA and beyond, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. You can also support the channel on Patreon, so let's get going. It's mid-summer 2024, and all eyes are of course on Rocket Factory Augsburg, ahead of their maiden flight from Saxevoord Spaceport in Shetland. In what is going to be a truly historic event, a first orbital rocket launch from UK soil. Back in May, they conducted their first static fire test and then shut down operations at the launch site due to restrictions in place governing the local wildlife breeding season. That's right, we're talking the birds and the bees. But that didn't mean RFA just put their feet up and sipped on some pina coladas for a few weeks. No, they were hard at work across their sites testing all components of the RFA-1, including their Redshift OTV, Orbital Transfer Vehicle, or the thing that will deploy their payloads in space. In mid-July, RFA completed a full duration simulation of the OTV for flight operations. This included a 600 second or 10 minute burn of that single pressure fed Phoenix engine, a 40 minute coast phase, and then a 30 second orbital circularization burn all performed flawlessly and qualifying it for flight. Ultimately, the OTV will be able to place 1,300 kilograms of payload into sun-synchronous orbit, or up to 150 kilograms into geostationary orbit, and it's also intended to be used for debris removal, satellite inspections, and end-of-life operations. Not only that, but RFA also performed further fairing separation tests at its base in Portugal, before shipping the first RFA-1 fairing to Saxevoord ahead of flight. Finally, just this past weekend, and as brought to us by the angry astronaut, RFA performed a wet dress rehearsal at Saxevoord. This is a crucial test, with the first stage filled with liquid propellants, testing the durability of the tankage itself, and all the associated systems, as would be like on launch day. It's incredible to think how far RFA have come this year, and how close we are to that first launch since the one arrived in Shetland just two months ago. Speaking of launches, one that hasn't happened yet but is still slated for some time this year is that of the High Impulse SR-75. Well, to help that goal get a little further forward, the UK Space Agency recently awarded High Impulse £5 million in funding, bringing total UK government investment in the German rocket manufacturer to nearly £9 million. After a successful maiden flight from Coonabah, Australia just a few months ago, High Impulse are keen to carry out another launch before the expiry of their licence in December 2024, and this funding award will help accelerate plans to build and ship another SR-75 to Shetland, which has been one of High Impulse's main bases of operations in its development. Interestingly, this funding has drawn the ire from Orbex's CEO, and other industry figures who questioned the strategy in funding a sounding rocket over perhaps adding additional funds into their own programs. However, High Impulse are clear on their development strategy. By flying the SR-75, they can test systems shared with a larger SL-1. Now, if you want to know more about the SL-1, then be sure to check out my previous video on it. But Orbex are also looking for more funding of their own to work on ESA's Launcher Challenge, for which they have been selected as participants. And they want to build a rocket larger than the Prime, which is still in active development. That rocket would be fully in the medium class and see them able to place between 5 and 10 tons into low Earth orbit. While we haven't seen a single sight of the Prime several years into its development, aside from a few photographs and some mock-ups, things are getting close, with Orbex looking to complete their Sutherland spaceport and launch the rocket all in 2025, 
so it only makes sense that they are now thinking about the future. But let's not take anything away from High Impulse. Unlike Orbex, they have actually launched something successfully, and that competition is good for the industry, driving each other on to bigger and better things. After all, healthy competition drives innovation. But speaking of the competition, we have to turn to ABL. Yes, the company selected by Lockheed Martin and the UK Space Agency back in 2018 to carry the UK Pathfinder satellite into orbit from Saxavord, actually, supposed to be the first rocket company to launch from Saxavord, has suffered yet another setback. ABL were preparing their RS-1 rocket for a second test flight, following a spectacular end to their first attempt in 2023. The two-stage vehicle was on the launch pad in Alaska, when, during a static fire test recently, residual fire on the pad caused fatal damage to the rocket. This is a huge blow for ABL, who will now step back to investigate the root cause before preparing a further rocket for flight. ABL currently have multiple launch contracts waiting, including the UK Pathfinder, as well as a space telescope from Scout Space, so they will have to find a way back to the pad quickly. Let's keep our fingers crossed. AAC Clyde Space, satellite manufacturers from Glasgow and Scotland, have secured their first customer for its Cyclops Earth Observation Satellite Constellation, a new generation of high-resolution imaging satellite which is going to be used to monitor the health and condition of Scotland's forests. Having entered into an agreement with the Scottish Government in a contract worth £600,000. The satellites are of the 16U variety, which puts it into the CubeSat category, being only 226 by 226 by 454 millimeters in dimension. These will be the first 16U sats built by AEC, and the first two are currently under construction, with launch due in 2025. Four satellites will make up this constellation and will provide a variety of high-resolution imaging capabilities to customers. Speaking of CubeSats, and we are all set for another batch from ALBA Orbital, due to lift off on SpaceX's next transporter rideshare mission. Seven pocket cubes from six different countries were integrated this past month into an ALBA pod in Glasgow at their base ahead of shipment to SpaceX for further integration onto Transporter 12, due to launch this October. We have Skylink 1 and 2 from Turkey delivering Internet of Things services, Hype AGH from AGH University in Poland, which is an onboard UV Viz spectroscope and camera to analyze light, pollution, volcanic ash, and forest degradation. Then we have Prometheus 1 from Portugal, Poquito from Luxembourg, which aims to test Pocket Cube to chipset communications via LED. Hades R from Hydra Space Systems in Spain, featuring an experimental low power graphene radiator developed by the University of Manchester's Graphene Engineering Innovation Centre. And the Hydra T, also from Hydra Space Systems, featuring various communications technologies in the UHF and VHF bands, together with an educational payload. Pocket cubes are quicker to manufacture than traditional satellites and can offer similar mission profiles. Pocket cube designs can also be built from open source materials, such as that like the Prometheus 1, enabling virtually anybody to send a satellite into space. So, yeah, this is truly exciting. And the current state of the UK space industry as a whole is still very much bright, and we can really look forward to more action from RFA ahead of their launch estimated for some time between September and October, all going well. What do you think of all these projects going on? Sound off in the comments below. It's great to be back after a few weeks on holiday, and as ever, we'll be following all the action ahead. Don't forget to give the video a little like, and while you're checking out your daily batch of space news, be sure to drop in on Space Kate's brand new channel, Need to Know Space. Kate did an amazing job filling in for me a few videos back, so do go and show her some support. In the meantime, follow me on X for all things space nerdery. I've been Tom June, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>